What's up YouTube, Obaje here and speed up in Premiere Pro is not as easy as hitting just the B key on your keyboard. It's a little bit more advanced than that. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to speed ramp in Premiere Pro. Some may even say better than it's done in Final Cut Pro. So as we all know, speed ramp transition has been one of the most commonly used transitions nowadays in filmmaking thanks to Daniel Schiffer and Peter McCannon. So what is it? What is speed ramping? That is not simply put. Let me just show you. So without wasting more time, let's just jump right into Premiere Pro. So the first thing you want to do is import your footage by simply dragging it into the project pin or hitting the command plus I or control plus I keys if you use Windows. But before we continue, if you're new to the channel, I review smartphone cameras as well as create other tech related content and also give tips on how to shoot better videos with just your phone. So please consider hitting the subscribe button and the bell icon so you don't miss out on future videos like this one. Next thing you need to do is make sure you have your sequence created. You can do this by right clicking in the project pin, new sequence, then select the resolution you want your video to come out in. An even more easier way to do this is by just dragging your footage into the timeline area and this will automatically create a sequence with the video's dimensions. Now you want to increase the size of the layer by hitting the command and plus keys or the control and plus keys if you use windows. Get the other clip you want to transition into and import it into the timeline beside it. After that, right click on each individual layers, head on to show clip keyframes, time remapping and then speak. Now what this does is to give us the option to edit freely the time mappings of each individual layer. What we are going to do now is to speed wrap at the end of the first clip and speed wrap at the beginning of the second clip to try and fix those two together. Here is what I mean. So the first thing you want to make note of is if your clips will blend together. As you can see, this motion is from left to right and this is from right to left. It doesn't quite match the style. So in order for your edits to flow, they have to go in the same direction or in the same feel. So since this clip is going from left to right, what I'm going to do is right click and I'm going to simply reverse this clip so it will go from right to left the same motion here, left to right rather. Now because you've already manipulated the time on this clip, your speed ramping will be messed up if you speed ramp on a reverse clip. So what you're going to do to fix that is just right click and nest. Now like I said earlier, you're going to speed ramp at the end of this clip and at the beginning of this clip. Now what we're going to do is go to the point at which you want your speed ramp to start. In my case, I wanted to speed ramp all the way here. I'm going to hold down my command click and click control key if you're using windows and the same thing for here i'm going to hold down my command key and click now i shot this at 720p uh 50 fps and i like to keep my speed up between 250 to 350 percent i don't know you can play with this as much as you want depending on how many frames you shot your video on now you're going to come around to this slider here and drag it all the way in my case let's say to 80 300 and i'm going to do the same thing for here say 300. now if you play that back you see it's not so bad now another thing i noticed about my clip is this motion is quite slower than this one so i'm going to bump this one a little bit more and let's see how that goes okay that is looking much better but if you play this back it's kind of rough and choppy now since right here your clip is just going from a hundred percent clip immediately to a 200 and 300 percent clip which doesn't really make sense so what we're going to do to fix that is to ease it in now you come you zoom into your clip and at the point where you made this selection earlier you're going to go to either the left or the right side i prefer going to the right side and you're going to drag it to kind of like give it this slope 
an increase, slight increase in speed. Now we're going to do the same thing for this point. One, two, three. I like to keep it three times just to be on the safe side. Now let's play that back. And that's pretty much how you speed up inside of Premiere Pro. Now another thing Final Cut Pro does to try to like smoothing out the effect is by easing it in. Doing it here, you have to do it manually, but it's not that hard. Now, remember when we created this slope, we're going to zoom in on this slope, click there, and this slider is going to come out. Now what you're going to do is take either point and just try and make a smooth curve. Now don't do it all the way or else you'll be going back to that zigzag choppy motion. Now what you want to do is just to give it a little bit of curve and we're going to do it here also. Now if you play this back, let's see the result. And that is pretty much it. That's how you do the Final Cut Pro Speed Ramp Transition inside of Premiere Pro. You're welcome. Now, an additional thing that Nashifa does to make the Speed Ramp Transition so much better is by adding a little bit of motion blur. Now, Premiere Pro doesn't have a pre-installed motion blur effect, but this can easily be done in After Effects, and I'll explain how to do that in a bit. But a little hack I use is the pre-installed directional blur effect still inside of Premiere Pro. All you have to do is create a new adjustment layer. If you don't know how to do that, just simply go to the project bin, right click, select new and adjustment layer, hit ok and you just learned something new. So drag the adjustment layer over the curve between the two clips and be sure to trim it to where your speed ramp starts and when it ends on the second clip. Apply a directional blur effects on the adjustment layer, tweak the settings to your taste and how you want it and that's pretty much it. For the second method that involves the actual motion blur effect inside of After Effects, now this is where the Adobe Dynamic Link comes in. Make sure you are running the same versions of After Effects and Premiere Pro. I have the CC2020 version on both apps, or not my Adobe apps actually, except Photoshop which I'm totally cool with the 2018 version. Now inside of Premiere Pro, all you have to do is select the two clips you have transitioned, right click and nest them. Now you have to mark the points at which the speed ramp started and ended as this will guide us in applying the effects inside of After Effects later on. Right click on the nested sequence after you must have marked the transition frame, then click on replace with After Effects composition. Now this immediately opens up After Effects, not immediately in my case but it might take longer for some people. Now if it doesn't open automatically, you can go around it by manually opening After Effects right before you click the replace with After Effects composition option. Now when inside of After Effects, head on to layer new and then new adjustment layer. Now trim this like we did inside our Premiere Pro earlier to the part where you marked from Premiere. Now if you don't see the marks just head back to Premiere Pro and just do a little time frame hack by noticing the time where the transition happened and release it inside of After Effects. Now after trimming the adjustment layer head on to the effects and control panel and search for motion blur. Drag the effect onto the adjustment layer and turn on motion blur for that layer. Head back to Premiere Pro to see your results. Now repeat this as much as you want in different clips and there you have it. That is how you speed up like Daniel Schiffer inside of Premiere Pro. Now if you have any questions, I'll be right in the comment section down below ready to answer every single one of them. And please don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Also, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up so more people like you get to see it on YouTube. And I'll see you guys in my next one.